Hey, welcome to Guitar Knobs, the guitars, gear, noise, and nonsense podcast hosted today by these knobs. Tony Dudzik, Pick Guardian, Jared Brandon, all the way down in Nashville. Nashville. Hey, everybody, it's me, Todd Novak. Welcome to the Guitar Knobs podcast. We're thrilled enough that you're listening to our show. That's right. Yep. More about that later. <laughs> We've got a fantastic guest tonight. Uh, today, whatever it might be for you, is when this is. Uh, and it's this is a repeat, but we'll give you a guess on how many repeats. Guess who are you? Uh, Jeff Schroeder. <laughs> Planet Earth. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> yes. Sometimes. 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 Many, yes. time, many times from Planet Earth. <laughs> yeah. Welcome back, my friend. Yes. Jeff, yeah, thank this you. is... Thank you for tolerating me oh, one absolutely. more time. We love it. This is number seven. Wow. Which seven? I'm pretty sure it's seven. Tony, double check me. We, we, I'm gonna have to. Chance. I'm gonna have to do some research. I, I, I'm sure it is. I counted it. Uh, we're gonna have a great time talking to our old friend Jeff. A lot has been going on in this man's life. So, uh, but in the meantime, we're gonna get in the way of that with a bunch of nonsense. So, yep. Uh, let's talk about announcements real quick. I've got a couple boxes of boxes at home. I, I've got stuff to give away to everybody, and I'm really excited about this. But as I mentioned on the last podcast, I don't want to just jump. We just got through giving away all the warm audio stuff. We need to let the you know the the meat rest a little bit, as it were. So um, I expect that probably in the next mm, announcement in the next uh, two weeks. So. And then after that, we have another one. And then after that, we have another one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you're interested and you're like, what am I waiting for? We're going to announce it at the end, but I'm going to go ahead and give you a jump start. Go to patreon.com, look up the guitar knobs, and hook up. Join us. It'd be great. We'd love to have you. The water's fine. Okay. On with what's going on in our music worlds this week. Tanya Belonsky. Yes. What is up with you? And then we're going to check in with Jeff. Well, since I had some free time this long weekend, I decided to tune on to That's right, Dis- it's a Memorial Weekend. Yes, it is. Disney Plus to watch the new Beach Boys documentary. Mm. Oh, man. I gotta watch that. Well, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> maybe I could save you a couple hours. No, it's right. a, it's actually a very Disney well done documentary. Um, it's very homogenized. It makes Mike Love look kind of like a saint, which he ain't. Yeah. No, just 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 ask. Um, what's his name? He'll tell you. Brian yeah. Wilson. Brian Wilson. Yeah. <laughs> what's his name? <laughs> yeah, that guy. Yeah. I, or, or, I do or that three, to everybody or, in the world. By the way, or three, I do that to God. What's that guy up there? What's his name yeah. again? The, yeah. So, or, or three fourths of of the listening audience probably would agree that Mike Love is a douche. But um, did I say that? At, yeah. We are we allowed to say we that? We don't usually do that. But uh, <laughs> it's, it's, no, it's, yeah. come on, you got to. He ain't got a. He ain't got a computer. Come on. He might be listening. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. Well, Mike, if you're listening, <laughs> yeah. we love you. Yeah. Enter your expletive. <laughs> okay, Tony. So, I mean. It did. I mean, I've I've read a couple of books. I've seen a couple of you know uh, biopics and things like that. And uh, it's uh, you know, it, like I said, it's it's a kind of a homogenized version of history. Um, is it, that be, because there's so much to tell? And they if it, they're probably talking to people who are like, what? what? Who well, are these guys? I'm thinking that 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 that's part of it. Yeah, it's a big story. Um, also, uh, there's a there's a lot of dead Beach Boys right now, so it's kind of tough for them to, uh, you know, have fresh interviews with people mm, other yeah. than with Mike Love and Brian Wilson, yeah. uh, who is mm, sadly, yeah. I just heard that he had uh, a conservative ship placed on him, which is kind of like a guardianship. Yeah. And uh, we I, saw him a couple of years ago live here. Yes, we did. That was pretty cool. So, um, I mean, it's it's worth a watch if you don't know much of the Beach Boys story. It definitely uh, continues to paint Murray Wilson, uh, the Wilson brothers' father, as the true villain of all time. Um, 
He was, yeah, he, he was another guy that was essentially jealous of his sons and the Why fame. Why does that happen so much in, in show business? I don't know. I wasn't asking you. I was asking Jeff. Oh. <laughs> Jeff, you're, uh, you're a superstar. How does, why does this happen? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I, I think usually with those overbearing parents like that, it's the ones that were kind of failed artists themselves. And so maybe they have this feeling that they have to do whatever it takes to make sure that their children – make it but in doing that they just control everything yeah yeah well i'd say i mean apparently I mean, you certainly yeah like i say it's very twisted because you see it so much everywhere from what britney spears to the jacksons Simpsons. to <laughs> well, I yeah, mean, yeah. Uh, jessica yeah. not bart <laughs> i was like i was like oh yeah I'm like, okay, homer's god. homer's I'm a like, villain god. i'm like if you say so todd <laughs> 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 Uh, but um, so it's worth mm, watching. Trust fund. <laughs> um, and 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 the the bright point was I we're we're approaching the end. It's like they show some footage from a 1980 when all the still the original Beach Boys were alive and playing together. They were playing. They did that us festival, Washington. right? Didn't they do that uh, festival? I don't Maybe know. Maybe not. That no, was I think ago. you're getting confused with Judas Priest. Yes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. That's an easy slip. <laughs> <laughs> they are so similar. Yes. Uh, so I, we're getting to the end. I know I can feel the wind down, and I'm saying, oh, thank God we made it through the movie without having to hear Kokomo. Quite possibly the worst song ever written. Yeah. Um, it blew well, up I, in the well, late I guess you don't want to. Huge, I'm man. not going to make my announcement that that's going to be my first <laughs> post. I'm gonna use my cover yeah. of Kokomo. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm uh, sure. Uh, I'm sure yours will be an improvement. Yeah. Uh, but so we're getting through, and it's at the end. And roll credits, and guess what song pops up? Kokomo. Kokomo. Oh boy. And this no, is I, this know. is this is Mike but Love that, but with no Beach Boys. But that's what this it, is Mike Love with no Beach Boys recording a piece of horse dung and it it becomes one of their biggest hits in the 1980s. I didn't so seriously educate us that don't well, know like it went myself. with Cocktail the movie. So Mike Love Mike was Love. the only one involved with that song. That's Let me it. tell you another story about Mike Love. Okay. Mike Love registered the name Beach Boys to himself and warned all of the other Beach Boys that they could not use that in any of their reference materials. If Carl Wilson put out a a, uh, a, a solo album, he couldn't say Carl Wilson of the Beach Boys. That's insane. This man is evil, and they, they paint this, this... Well, he's an old fart now, but... <laughs> he deserves it. Tony's angry. <laughs> Do you sense that I don't like Mike Love? Yes, yeah. <laughs> That's abundantly clear. Okay. Yeah. I'll leave it at that. But yeah, so yeah, we had to listen to Kokomo through the roll credits. So Yeah. Eh. Well, he got um, paid for that. Aruba. Jim- yes, I can make uh, it. Stop it. Yeah. <laughs> quick, a quick, quick interjection. Yes, I have please. a very quick Brian Wilson story. Uh, oh, man. So, so one wild. time, when in the this is like 94, 95, I was in this band. We had a manager who was a publicist. It was his day job. And he worked at a very big publicity company, did whatever. I think Michael Jackson was actually one of his – like he got assigned to – he was part of the Michael Jackson team. And mm-hmm. and he got a lot of the problem stars like Corey Feldman and – and and because he was in the news recently, uh, if you remember, Kato Kalin yes. was one. And so I actually went to so me, my manager, some of my bandmates, and Kato Kalin. We went to this party, and I can't remember. It was for some kind of B level movie producer or something, and at his house in Hollywood. And so we walk in the front door, and who's sitting there at a table with two pizzas? By himself, Brian Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just couldn't believe. It. We're like, oh, oh my god, it's Brian Wilson, and he had these pizzas and was just. He'd take one slice, take a bite, put it down, pick up another slice. <laughs> put it down. That sounds like a Jared yeah. maneuver because yeah, I've seen was- Jared with a pizza, <laughs> and to yeah. keep anybody else from from having a yeah, uh, yeah. An, a slice of his prized pie. That's not my strategy. I eat it so fast, you don't have a chance. <laughs> well, and so there there is a picture somewhere. So as me and my friend looking at the camera, and Brian's looking 
wherever he's looking, somewhere else, not at the camera. And you can see all these these pizzas in front of him. I got to dig that out. My friend has it somewhere. So <laughs> He's looking in yeah. pizza heaven. <laughs> <laughs> and that was like 94. So it's like if he just got an executor now, I mean, he, I think he did all right. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Yeah, but he, I got, I got, I got a quick too. I got a please let me. Uh, so well, my dad stopping was stopping you, Jared, just so we're clear. I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm a bulldozer. Going to tell the story. Uh, my dad overweight. Uh, he was in Cleveland for business, and Brian Wilson was as well. Uh, they were at the same hotel, and uh, Dad got in the elevator. It was Brian Wilson. He was in pajamas. His hair was all messed up. He just looked like he got out of bed and there was a guy with him, uh, maybe the doctor guy. And um, <clears throat> my dad said, oh, my goodness, Brian Wilson, I'm a big fan since I was a kid. I love your music. I just I'm a huge fan. It's a pleasure to meet you. And he said, looked at my dad and he said, hey, how much do you weigh? <laughs> Wow. <laughs> He's probably worried about the, the capacity of the elevator, maybe. Uh, and the guy and the guy looked at Brian. He's like, Brian, you should not treat people like that. Like he was a four like he was four years old. I think that was that doctor. That oh, was, yeah, that could have been. Yeah. 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 I so my dad witnessed that in real life. That was pretty crazy. Yeah. He, that's crazy. my Brian Wilson story. Now that was a great movie, by the way. Um, yes. What was it called? Uh, ba, 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 ba. Heroes and Villains? No, not Heroes and Villains. Uh, oh, I couldn't tell you. John Cus- it was really good. John Cusack. John Cusack. Was in Cusack. It. Yeah. yeah. Great, great show. Oh, wow. Watch that movie, listeners. Really good one. Excellent. <laughs> Jeff, I know you just kind of shared a Brian Wilson story, but what's going on in your music world? Actually, um, I've been listening to, I've been delving into classical music if you can believe it i believe it yeah so i'm reading a book by alex ross he was the i guess new yorker music critic um called the rest is noise and it's kind of history of 20th century classical music that's That's a great title (laughs) yeah 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 yeah. fantastic yeah so when things start getting a little bit strange right yeah yeah so that's 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 what i do that's (laughs) That's what I do to torture myself in my free time. Wow. Do you have um, a favorite? Oh, I mean, the world of classical music is huge, but uh, is there something that you particularly are digging? Well, I think that what originally drew me into it were some of more like the minimalist mm-hmm. you know, genre, which would be people like Philip Glass and Steve Reich and, and things like that. And I always had like a, I always found. John Cage, a, a such an interesting person too, and so mm-hmm. actually, I have a documentary about him on DVD that I brought out and watched that the other night. Um, yeah, and also, um, yeah. Speaking of, I've been kind of going through watching some music documentaries. I'm watched. I have one too on um, Bill Frizzell mm, too. Yeah, that's a, that's by Emma France. That's an excellent documentary. That too. is that is a great yeah. one. Yep. Yeah. So I watched that recently, and he's just just so inspiring. Super cool, man. Not as not as controversial as Mike Love, though. <laughs> well, the more you learn about that, you'll probably <laughs> uncover a whole bunch of baddies. <laughs> Very cool. Well, I see a little bit of uh, uh, foreshadowing in our story, maybe just a touch. A touch too much. I can't. Sorry, I, ha- I can't have to do that. Okay, uh, Jared, about yourself. Oh, yeah. Um, So lately, uh, there's a fella at work, uh, even though he works at Gibson, he is not a guitar player. He had a friend that passed and willed him a a Travis Bean guitar. Oh, wow. A real one. Yeah. So what's been happening is he feels like the guitar needs to be played all the time. So he just passes the guitar around. That's cool. And uh, and I, the first time I uh, played this guitar it was at my friend Nick's house. He also works at Gibson. He had the guitar. And uh, hey, <laughs> and uh, he wants to talk too. That's okay. Uh, anyway, we we were playing it, and I I couldn't believe how good that aluminum neck felt. I mean, I'm serious. I. I 
thought, eh, I'm not going to like this. It's like aluminum. It's metal. It's weird. It's whatever. And the pickups sound amazing, too. They're, they're like a wide range design with uh-huh. a totally uh, holeless cover. So there's no holes in the covers at all. They're just giant pickups. Sound fantastic. Um, they're hotter than normal wide range uh, pickups. So it uh, it's been refinished at one time, but uh, who cares? I mean the the it's an original old Travis Bean. It's got an old dusty case. Um, cool. Excuse man. me. So yeah, uh, he texted me. He's like, "Hey man, you want to uh, take possession of the Bean for a while?" And I was excited. I lit right up. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, it's currently it at my different? house. Do you feel like it sounds really different? Is it, you know, if you close uh, your eyes, is it the same? It's, uh, it's, it's more resonant than, it just feels like a super resonant guitar. If I were to describe it. Like snappy? Kind of snappy, yeah. And then when you, you hit a power chord, it just yeah. rings out forever. Um, that could be due to the, the really good pickup design with the aluminum neck and it's an older guitar and uh the neck actually like i said i everybody has their own flavor of what what they want their neck to be everybody does yep. but just just so happens that i really like and i'm not picky about necks but this one is really nice i couldn't believe how much i liked it that's cool man yeah. Because if you don't like it, what are you going to do? You're going to sand it, I guess. You're going to sand it, right? But you can never put the <laughs> That's the metal option. shavings. Right. It's yeah. like it's a little more finalized after that. I don't know. Yeah. Jeff, have you played uh, any Travis Beans? No. It, but, it, Jared, are the bodies aluminum too? No, just the just, just the, the neck. neck. Just yeah. the neck. Yeah. yeah. I've played um, a few Valinos. Remember those from... Oh yeah, yeah, but yeah. Linos, yeah. Um, Jeff Benj in Chicago, guitar repair man who worked on um, my guitars and Billy's guitars a bunch. Um, he's just a wealth of of knowledge, and so somehow he came across a stash of Valino parts, and so was able to, you know, friend of a friend of a friend got. This some guy for some reason had a stash of parts somewhere, wow. and so he was able to put together um, some guitars. And it's a cool experience. I, I really actually kind of wanted one, but you know they're they're not cheap. So no. and then it, and it's kind of the thing like, are you really really going to use it? So I mean, yeah. but it it is cool. It is cool. Yes, it's very different. Um, yes, I would imagine. Quite, quite so. I think that would be very difficult to wrap your head, like play normally or usually rather, like all the time, as opposed to your the like wood guitars. Like I think you have to kind of. It feels like it's for a certain kind of music almost. Yeah, especially if you have that monkey grip problem that you have. Yes, (laughs) terrible. (laughs) And one more little thing I'd like to add to my little segment is, um, I wanted to thank. my good old buddy uh, Tony Balonsky for sending me a, a uh, um, oh my gosh, name's out of my head. It's a uh, Jared Brandon. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, for my Trini Lopez. So I, <laughs> I recently picked up a Trini Lopez at work for for uh, a good deal, and and it's the Pelham Blue, and uh, Tony Balonsky sent me a Trini Lopez little placard that goes on the bottom. On oh, the nice. tailpiece, tail cool. yeah. On the tailpiece, it says Jared Brandon. So thank you very much, Tony Balonsky. You're so welcome, it, Jared. Is this a uh, a reissue? Yeah, uh, yeah. It's yeah. a custom shop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Pelham Blue. Very awesome. Nice. Yeah, very it's pretty nice. nice. You yeah. and Dave Grohl can hang out now. Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I I I like Dave Grohl. Yeah, yeah. Who doesn't? That, that's Todd, not why I got the guitar. But, yeah. <laughs> Todd, what about you? What do you? Well, what's in going on in your musical world this week? I, so, for whatever, you, sometimes you get little things planted in your head, and I know myself well enough to know when that like tickle hits in your brain, and and I'm like, okay, I, I and I just started putting off the inevitable because I found at our local uh, used guitar place, 
a couple of pedals that I've I've heard enough about to where I'm like, what's going on with these things? Is the hype real? Uh, and what do you think? I grabbed them. I grabbed. There was three of them, but I only grabbed two. So you got the Joyos. I got I got the Joyo uh, AC tone and British sound. They were twenty twenty dollars. Like get get out of here! Right? I'm like I have to see what the hype is. Um, oh, Bob! I didn't do the American one because I don't want it to sound like a Fender. But um, I was very keen to try the AC tone, especially. Mm. I'm been playing out of a Marshall, so I'm like, well. What does a Marshall sound like through a Marshall, yeah, essentially? Because these are uh, originally... A Marshall through a Marshall sounds like a Mesa Boogie. Uh, okay. <laughs> I, don't know how to pro- I don't know how to process it. But actually, that's probably about what I was hearing today. Um, uh, but what's interesting about this is that I found out that these were actually based off of the Sans Amp pedal that uh, Kurt Cobain was j- using where you could change whatever the voice was, essentially. Yeah, but those had dip switches. I know they had dip switches. It was, it was but these are, like, pulled out. It was like each one was a dip switch, kind mm. of, ish. Anyways, mm. um, I have to say. Yes? I was not keen on the British so much. Was I'll it probably, worth $20? It was worth $20 to find out, so I don't have to itch in my head. Mm. But I also can return this. Hmm. Let me see it. It is used. Uh, and it's these are, like, they're well-made. They're, like, uh, at least the the case, casings of them. Um, now, now, Todd, these are, yeah. are, are they basically, like, a they simulate an amp? Yeah, it's basically okay. an amp in a box, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, the AC tone, which models a Vox, I was really loving this. Hmm. I can't believe I'm saying that, but I was like, wait a minute. I really like this. Uh, not for everything, but for certainly some things. It fits my style for my band. And I started to think of different ways, things that I could pair with. And I was like, ooh, 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 this is cool. So, yeah, I was, I was impressed. It brings, the, it brings the, a little bit of jangle, a little bit of extra, extra sparkle, which, Tony, we talk about this all the time. Jangle like, sparkle. I, I like that. You know, I like being able to hit a, a, a nice fat core, but also get like some sprang off of it too. You yeah. know, well, I can tell right now based on the settings that you have on this. It's British moved around Joyo, in, my, but in my bag. Give you've me a break. got the mids pegged. <laughs> Come on, I didn't got, peg the mid, you mids. You scoop the mids. Uh, scoop it. It was in my bag. Uh, Anyways, um, Jeff, were you trying to chime in there? I was going to ask you. So you're playing these. Into your amp, they're not for going direct into. Correct. Your There's no DI on it at all. It's okay. you know, it's it's um that costs five dollars more. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. So this, I I put that, and actually I tried it with a boost in front of it too, and I was like, ooh, that sounds pretty good. Doggone it. Hmm. Um, and now, now, what kind of amp are you playing it through? This is the Marshall Origin Fifty. Um, and that's that, your that's what you're you that, that's what you play through. Yeah, yeah, that's what okay, I've been okay. playing through uh, as of late, and I, I'm pl- I'm running it r- pretty clean. I mean, very little gain on the actual Marshall. Um, certainly not into a drive sound at all. I mean, it's it's clean. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I hit that w- with this, I, I was really pleasantly surprised. Hmm. I I was kind of shocked, and I kept wanting to play. So I'm like, well. That's a mark of a pedal. If you if you're like, eh, you know, one for two, one for two. So, I yeah, I'll probably rehouse this or something like you know, kind of paint it up, just my own thing, because you know, make it look like it's a box. It's pretty boring looking, but huh? yeah, make it look like a box. You should. Amp. You should. Um, what are the, what? What's that British guy? Um, oh gosh, Stephen Toast. <laughs> no, uh, British <laughs> pedal maker, and he did uh, um, really. P- Cornish, Cornish. Cornish. Oh, you should, yeah, you should yeah. get you should get a Cornish housing for it. <laughs> I could do that. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like real, the most expensive housing that you could get. Yes. <laughs> I like that idea. <laughs> Indeed. Um yeah. So anyways, it that was a fun find. Well, you, know? you you could actually house that inside of four bucks inside I mean, of an of M- and house it inside of a nineteen sixties Fawn AC thirty cabinet. I, what? 
<laughs> just yeah come on yeah. i mean I, i've got a i got a buddy that you know hex who I, you know I, I reference all the time and he he plays a an ac30 uh on stage and hey and his sound is fantastic it's so good um and he barely has the thing up because he doesn't want it to start getting squishy which is kind of you know a, a bit of the problem with that because you know if you what, what are you shaking your head for? A Vox I amp is not squishy. What are you talking about? I when I had my fifteen, it it started to break up like so early. <sighs> anyways, but anyways that so then I get don't have to do that with this. Ta da! Ta da! And it didn't cost me you know a thousand bucks. So there you go. That's the thing. You're ahead of the game. I am. And um, also we just started uh, we had our first practice in a long time ah. because everybody was just kind of like taking a break and sorting some things out. But I had a pile of songs. I'm like, hey, 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 my clock is ticking here. So Did, we had, are you playing the theremin on this album? I am, yes. Okay. With a violin. Nice. That was my yes. idea. <laughs> um yeah, we knocked out I mean, we didn't just we solidified we finalized two songs that I've been sitting on for a long time. And nice. I was like, good. This is a That's great start. That's a good start. feeling. Yeah. Anyways, in order to get these uh, pedals that we got here, Tony, yes. you know how I got these all plugged in? Uh, did you buy some Joyo patch cables? I did not. <laughs> but I did use my Tour Gear Designs patch cables. And thank goodness, because the way that these are side jacks. Side to side. Which really just put a kink in my board. Mm. So I had to reach for the old... S-shaped cable to help S- me out. And you can get the S-shaped ca- cable and Is that the Sean S and cable? the C-shaped cables. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, on tourgeardesigns.com. Yes. We highly recommend these patch cables. They're thin. All the things. You've They're heard durable. It a thousand times. We're going to get on with this because if you as soon as you put all of these co- cables that you need in your cart, you're going to get 15% off Ow. when you use the coupon code the guitar knobs all lowercase all one word that's right they get to your house in a hurry and you'll be happy happy so thank you to tourgetdesigns.com for sponsoring our four on the floor jared let me get a little bit of this one two one two three four on the floor jeff schroeder guitarist extraordinaire what is your four on the floor again for the seventh time well i have a new one so this this is this is actually going to be fun because um, post me uh, quitting my day job, um, I had more time to just flounder in whatever type of guitar rabbit hole I wanted to go down, and one of those had um, proved to be the one that I don't know. Maybe you guys don't, but I, I kind of go. I fall down this one every. I don't know, eight. Eight to ten years, where I get I get really into Jimi Hendrix again. Wah pedal. No, 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 no. Oh. So and so, I was like, well, so I so it started. I bought you know Hal Leonard makes this really nice um, hardcover edition of the complete, not a complete Jimi Hendrix, but it has Are You Experienced, Access Bold as Love, Electric Ladyland, and Band of Gypsies, full transcriptions, guitar, bass, wow. even the drums. Yeah, and so uh, you know, I was I I was like, okay, I want to kind of start learning this and kind of really, really getting it under the hood with this. I think we all can kind of play some licks, but I wanted to just, okay, let me kind of look at it a little more closely. Mm-hmm. But so then I said, well, I need to get the sounds to play along because mm-hmm. <laughs> this is because you know I'm that guy. Just I want to sit in my room sure. and and play along, you know, and I gotta have you know, so I gotta have the most expensive sit in my room rig. You could. Right. Have. I'm just kidding. No, but but so I did um, decide to get into some fuzz face pedals uh-huh. and Octavia and this kind of thing. So um, after you know buying a few things, I decided to contact our good friend uh, Mike at Analog Man uh-huh. and talk to him. And so then he hooked me up, built me two fuzz faces. So uh, nice. one, you know, his what he calls the sun face, yes. right? So, yeah. so we met one with the BC one hundred and nine uh, silicon fuzz, and then uh, the germanium, which is which is they're called Bart Bart transistors, some kind of big germanium transistor, you know, because obviously you can't get like the 
what is it the NKS one seventy five? I don't know the number. I I forget, but you know they're hard to get right, right. now. So, um, so I am partial to the germanium one. So I have that. So so but um, so that's one. Um, I actually ha- I bought the Dunlop Jimi Hendrix wah. So that's my f- one Jimi Hendrix wah. The uh, well, let's not because this order is something that's a whole other thing. So then we've got the wah, the germanium fuzz. Um, can, can I ask, since you were talking about the germanium fuzz thing uh, and, the, mm-hmm. and the fuzz face, obviously there's lots and lots of uh, roads to enter mm-hmm. into fuzz face land, um, including the fuzz face. Uh, did you explore any others? Is there a reason that you went straight to Mike? Uh, I did buy one of. I just bought one of the Dunlop ones. I used to have one as a kid. When yeah. in the nineties they first reissued them, and I don't know what ha- is like one of the few things I've lost. I have almost everything I've ever bought. Wow. I'm not a gear seller, and and for some reason I don't know what happened to it. Um, but I had one, you know, the round red one, and so I bought a the red one and the blue one th- mm-hmm. from Dunlop. And they're actually pretty good, but I thought, well, I can, let me, see, you know, I, I know the analog man, you know, Mike knows what he's doing over there. And so I, I said, I got, got to see if I can get even one better. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah. And so, and so his are quite good. They're, they're really nice. Um, but yeah, I haven't, I know that there's tons more, but I, I think I'm good here. Got it. Unless, unless, unless I'm going to, go head to head with Randy Hansen and start and go out and play live with my own <laughs> Jimi Hendrix tribute. I think, <laughs> I think I'm good. I think I'm good here. Got it. Uh, um, also, uh, so my next pedal though would be, um, the Dunlop Octavio, which is, you know, the octave up fuzz. And I was lucky enough that Jim Dunlop himself actually gave me one of the big ones. Wow. In like, that's right. Yeah. He, he came when we, I guess last year, those pumpkins, we played bottle rock and he, he was there and he's just always been really nice to me and really friendly. And we're talking about this stuff and, you know, they don't make it anymore. They only make the small one. And he said, it's because there's a part in the big one to make it authentic that, Basically, they'd have to buy like 4,000 of this part. And he's like, we'll never sell that many of those pedals. Yeah. So it's just not cost effective t- to make. But, and, but well, he said, after this but, show, he's going to regret that. <laughs> I know, I know. But he, was, he said, you know what? Let me look around the warehouse. Usually, even though we don't sell it anymore, I bet there's one or two somewhere. Oh, man. And then that's cool. He, he did. He was. He he's a man of his word and he sent me one. So that's, that's cool. So I got that. So the wah, the the sun face, the Octavio, and I got one of this Shine vibe oh. too. We're supposed yeah, to have them on the show. I got to get back. Yeah, to Yeah, which is the small one, but apparently, because I my good friend David Phillips at LA Sound Design, you know, he builds rigs and pedal boards of the stars. He's He's a Hendrix nut too, so he knows all the cool stuff to get. He said, "No, the get the Shine vibe too." And, um, so I have that and that's, I guess that's my four on the floor, but wow. that's a cool univibe. Yeah. But you know, the thing is, is once you get all of it, you I'm going to have a, a, a fifth silent pedal, oh, <laughs> you know, nice. because you know, once you have all of it, you plug it in, in the order Hendrix hit and it sounds horrible. Like it just <laughs> doesn't work. It doesn't make any sense. Okay. So like, what's the fifth one? Well, so is the uh, what I'm looking at it here the Greer Lightspeed, uh, and this was yes. this was from from David Phillips, because you run all your especially your fuzz face into that, and for some reason that pedal reacts like a vintage Marshall Plexi. The way wow. that it makes the fuzz kind of collapse and rolls off the high end in a certain way, and the way that it kind of the tactile feeling of it under the fingers it's like the craziest thing wow and i was because you know i've heard people pairing fuzzes with overdrives and i tried it with some of the ones i i had here and it sounded terrible 
And then so I called Dave again. I said, are you sure, really? He said, yes, you can use the the light speed or the Jan Ray, you know, that pedal. Mm-hmm. Um it's really expensive kind of light overdrive pedal too. And, um, but so I saw on reverb, there was a guy just down the road, you know, a couple towns over that had a, a light speed for sale. So I, I bought it and it arrived a couple of days later and Holy smokes, Dave was right. So you kind of put that at the end of your chain to kind of act like your Marshall lamp, Got you know, it. which, which is nicer. Cause if you want to play, if you're just kind of want to play into something small, like a clean amp pedal platform amp, you can kind of replicate that front end of a Marshall and kind of get that grit with the rear light speed. And, um, yeah, so that's, that's something that I've been playing around with. Well, you know, the one thing that you're missing is the extra the long. No, the, <laughs> the curly, curly cables. Yes, it is true. It is true. <laughs> you yeah. need, need to get you some if you want Hendrix tone. <laughs> well, it, it, you know, it's interesting because, um, you know, uh, what's that? There's a guitar company from Korea, South Korea, Mulan. You know, they, he's mostly famous for his basses. Like his P and jazz basses have become like there's a three year waiting list wow, to get wow. one of those. But um, Mr. Park there is um, like he, he, gets really deep into all this stuff. And so, he, you know, we were talking uh, when, when I was living in Korea for a while, he, we were talking about it and he said, well, just think of this, you know, Hendrix's cables, all the frequencies weren't going through. Those were like not nice. You know, the <laughs> cables back then weren't like as high quality as what you can buy now. Right. No, they're so, basic capacitors. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So he said, you know, that's kind of part of the thing, too. If you really want to be authentic, you can't use this really high, like all these expensive cables that people are buying now with like this kind of hi-fi sound. He's like, well, you're not going to sound like those guys did. Oh, and you're right about the pick guard, too. <laughs> I mean, it does. It's, that's like the mojo, right? That last thing, that yeah, last element. You know it. <laughs> I heard Hendrix. I heard Hendrix put LSD on it, so when he touch it with his fingers, it like steep into his hands and then into his Excuse brain. Excuse me. Excuse me while I touch this guard. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. I got a question about you, Octavio. Um, how do you? So, tell me about what is it, uh, what you pair with it, and like how you use it uh is it do you prefer it with certain uh, pickup configuration or um well you definitely for the yeah it's one of those things where if you're say let's just hype that you're using it on its own into Uh kind of a distorted like your marshall kind of sound yeah you know um typically i think you put it on the neck pickup and play above the 12th fret to get that sound right that, yeah. that you were most used to hearing and it, it does it, it really because i'm not a huge neck pickup person really for for distorted sounds uh-huh. um but in this case it really is part of the recipe and what is really fascinating and everybody knows this stuff but but even with this pedal is the volume knob where you have it affects on like kind of what frequencies pop out on your guitar Yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. Yeah. So it's that it's that very interactive thing between and the, the tone pickup, knob too. The tone knob, yes, yes. That's even huge. the tone, yeah, yeah, that actually affects what frequencies. And two pop tone out knobs, two tone <laughs> knobs on a strat. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, the speaking of the Octavia, um, our buddy John Esterly at Rare Buzz Effects, yes, picked up a bunch of those. Uh, the chips that were in the original Octavias. No kidding. And he uh, he's he's built a couple of of uh, replica Octavias. Oh wow! So okay, interesting. Yeah, I think that's what Jim Dunlop was talking about. That those chips are yeah to get it to get enough of their yeah. It's not worth it for a company like them to to yeah. whatever to yeah yeah. These but apparently for, were the yeah. last of the remaining. Uh, you know, of the of the original production run kind of thing. And, yeah, you'd probably have to ha- – yeah, there's got to be – Oh, that's right, because he said – I think Josh Scott was trying to buy him or yeah. something like that, and, and he <laughs> bought him out from under him. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, it's a yes. – it's a terrible world. Well, I love that you shared a very unexpected uh, four on the floor with us. Yeah. Um, it's uh, – 
It's it's quite different um, than what we've talked to you about, you know. And not that I was, wasn't paying. Oh, one more. So can you? Nope. Uh, I'm I'm sorry. Can you uh, repeat? Because you guys actually, I lost you guys for a second. Oh, yeah, you were going. Me, me, me. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was Jared. Jared. That would have been Jared. Jared. Going in and out. We just it's lost their fault, Jared. Jeff. Um, I, hopefully it's uh, not. Uh, we're not going to get. Oh no. I hope we're not going to get any issue with storms going through. Uh, can you hear us, Jeff? Oh, you're back now. Okay. Now you're back. Okay. All, All we right. got was like storms going through, and then it made sense. Yeah, it might. We might get a little bit of let's uh, do a inter- clap in there. interference. Here we are. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was a very unexpected four on the floor. It's cool to hear you. You know how you're going off into a a, a, ter- a territory that you that I guess we haven't really heard you be in for a while. Even if you're just you know dabbling in such. Yeah. Um, we have, well, you know, and I was going to say, you know, because part of it is, is I get, and I'm sure we all have a bit of this is I, I start getting overwhelmed by what's out there. Yeah. There's just so much stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, so some days I think like, well, let's just go back to the basics and kind of start from there. And, you know, I really, what kind of got me thinking of, of it was I was listen, going back and just, you know, just listening to my favorites, you know, people, I mean, like Hendrix or even, um, you know, someone like Eric Johnson and or someone like Uli John Roth or even Ingve. These kind of guys who they're they're kind of built off the foundations of things that Hendrix did. And so I thought, like, well, how about let's just go to 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 square one and start there. And and really um, kind of investigate what's there because I think that I guess like my thinking kind of moving forward is I really miss like I think it seems these days not so many people have like such a a signature sound yeah you know you know like even in the way that like even Steve Vai or Joe Satriani in the early days really had kind of these signature sounds Mm -hmm. yeah um you know, Satriani now with once he switched to the Marshalls and using the amps, like it's it's. I mean, the way he plays sounds like him, but when he was using the old Marshalls and the DS1, it was like a more of a unique thing. Uh huh. You know, um, and um, yeah. You know, so I, I just think like like now I, I, I you know, and I. I think with using like so many people using modelers and things that like, I, I don't know if there's that much difference between one helix and another or one, <laughs> I mean, like, like, isn't, I don't know if maybe someday in the future people are like, well, I got a, you know, 2016 <laughs> helix and, you know, it sounds different than my 2017. Oh my what chip does it have? <laughs> Who signed the inside of the battery box? There may be some of that later, you know? Yeah, yeah. you never know. But, you know, but I think you know, with the old stuff, you know, things become more personal, especially sure, if you're using sure. vintage stuff because it's all just a, a little bit different. And, oh, you yeah. know, you had to really kind of create like your signature sound in a certain way. And so I, I've been kind of thinking like, I want to think more like that. And I, cause I, I think that I always would have a tendency to be like, I want a lot of sounds yeah. like the edge or something where the edge has a kind of a lot of sounds. But I started like when I, you know, listening to Eric Johnson and thinking, well, he really only uses, he's got that clean sound. He's got that mid sound and then he's got the lead sound and he, you know, there's a few, little variation in, within those, but he's basically kind of dealing with three major palettes, and I kind of like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. kind of like that. You know, he's basically had that same setup forever. Yep, yeah, it's a signature sound. It's also, I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's so much fun when you, uh, if you, if you've developed your own style of music or your your own band or whatever, and you get locked into saying, well, if I'm playing. I'm going to try to make that productive and I'm going to try to stay in my in the, in the lanes that I've created for this. this. I'm experiencing this right now. Um, and, and I like doing that and I get excited about doing that. But then I put on like the new ride record and I'm like, geez, I want to make this stuff too. And that explains the use of the theremin on uh, the new yes. Valentinos. Uh, you're not going to let that go. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> Jeff, not that I wasn't paying attention, <laughs> but I did consult with our uh, Guitar Knobs librarian. 
And uh, our librarian said, indeed, you, this is your seventh visit upon the that podcast. That is remarkable. We started at episode yeah. number 103. 103, back in the old days. That yeah. was back in September of 2018. And then, wow, how many episodes have you guys done? Uh, 300, mm. f- uh, what did I post today? 69. 369. 369. Wow, so it would take, I'd have to listen to an episode a day, and I still in a year wouldn't be able to go <laughs> through all of them. No, Even in a leap year. you certainly hate us by that time. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and then your last appearance is episode number 290, which was November of uh, 22. I think that was the live one you guys did yeah. up in Cleveland. See, I feel like, you know, we were talking about, uh, you know, uh, the, like the, the master's type jacket, but I'm, I actually think that it's probably more like uh, like a Rocky style boxing robe that has like goat and gold on the back or something like that. Either that or a custom color <laughs> fez. Yeah, sure. Yes, yes. Oh, <laughs> a custom yes. color fez it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, well, anyways, this is... That's a great pedal. This yeah, is... Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is very exciting um, because we get to talk about all kinds of great music and everything because you're on the show and you've been very busy in, uh, I guess, what maybe some might say your time off, um, which we'll get to in a second. But for those who are new to the world of Jeff Schroeder, um, would you mind just giving us a quick overview of what you do and where you've been? Um, so I was, I was born in 1974. I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, and, then in, and by 1979, I was in, uh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> when, I guess. So you toured with Judas Priest, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff actually wrote the Ripper. <laughs> I love it. I knew that. I knew that. Um, I, I started playing around L.A., Hollywood, um, actually, because that's where it was in the early 90s. Mm -hmm. Um, I graduated high school in 1992, so I was really at the – I came of age and started playing right at the beginning of the alternative music um, revolution, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Um, But it was great because before that, you know, the 80s was just such a, a wonderful time to grow up as a guitar player. But by 92, um, we were in Nirvana land and I started, I joined a band and the guys were a little bit older than me. And so I graduated, what, I guess June. And then by that fall, I was already starting to play Hollywood, which was so cool. Uh, so I got to play all the, all the, all the clubs. And, um, so Played in some various bands, um, most notably this band called The Lassie Foundation, which was more of a, I guess we were like a second generation shoegaze band because the first gen had already, it's like those bands like Ride that you keep yeah. on mentioning and um, My Ability Valentine still hadn't made a um, a response to Loveless, a follow-up to, to Loveless. Yeah. But even bands that were kind of associated with that genre, like, like The Verve and stuff, had kind of by like ninety five, ninety six had gone in more like folky bluesy directions. Yeah, all the, all those yeah. British bands ended up kind of going American blues for some reason, which which always <laughs> kind of boggles my mind. Yeah, you know, and even Slow Dive when they you know morphed into Mojave Three was more like a folk thing. Um, so when we came out with the Lassie Foundation in the mid nineties, it was kind of like a first wave of retro throwback of like, Hey, we're going to do like this kind of shoegaze thing. Um, so I did that for a while and then I left music for the first time in, uh, 2001, I went to graduate school at UCLA for comparative literature. And then in the midst of that, by 2006, I was there for like five years and then five years into it, I get this call from my buddy and then, he said, "Hey, Smashing Pumpkins are looking for a guitar player. I'm. I think you should put your name in the hat." Um, I did that and got the gig, and then did that for the last 17 years. Uh, Man, that's yeah, a long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So from 2006 to 2023. 
I was in that band. So what's the 401k like out of that? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> good, yeah, good question. So anyways. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, now, and the it, health insurance and the music industry. <laughs> and, yeah. Yeah. Top notch. <laughs> and yeah. H, the HR department. <laughs> yeah. Well, I did see that you did get your laundry done for free. Yeah, uh, yeah, outside yeah. of the uh, oh, yeah. the blossoms. Oh, that's there. right. <laughs> There's yes, one yes, that just that says good. Jeff's. <laughs> <laughs> or don't don't dry Jeff's clothes or something like that. Oh, that was funny. Maybe yeah. 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 Um, anyhow, no, that's that's one of the perks when you're in a when you're in a big rock band is you have um, an employee that takes care of all your wardrobe and personal clothes and yeah. Yes, we say because, we have people to do that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, the thing is, is uh, you know, most uh, this that last tour we did, we actually had to uh, finally, after many years, hired someone that was really um, good at their job, and all of a sudden, we had our own washer and dryer. That we that would carry that would go with like the gears, like you got your amps, and then you got a washer and dryer. And, and they were in road cases, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, of course you can. And she's like, yeah, they're like, whatever, a couple hundred bucks, <laughs> a couple hundred bucks a week to rent. You know, oh, you yeah. just then you never, you know, and so then. But most venues have a lot of these venues that where tons of bands play. They have facilities too, but then you got to deal with. You know, roadies need to do their laundry and stuff. So they yeah. for the band stuff, and then she could be in control of it and whatnot. And That's blah, cool. Blah, blah. But yeah, but yeah. So that yeah, yeah. So laundry was great. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. Bottom at the end of it all. Well, there you go. Yeah. That's, that's that's what I'll go out remembering. It was like, wow, like yeah. wasn't it so great? I didn't have to do my own laundry. <laughs> now, now I'm back to doing my own laundry. I did only get to wear one <laughs> pair of pants the entire place, but I didn't have to wash them. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I think one of the things that is worth talking about here well wait first of all there's a lot of things that are worth talking about but i will tell you that i can't remember my phone blowing up more in the last couple of years uh except when when the news came out that you were leaving the pumpkins i thought oh my gosh what, what is this did somebody die like because my phone is going bananas <laughs> I was like, did somebody what, what what's going on Crazy. and i wow. was asking we were because we were in a meeting and, and i was asking people i'm like is something going on and the because my phone's going crazy like look, take a look at it i'm like well i already knew because you, you know you told me but um the the i couldn't believe the amount of people which is cool because that means they've been paying attention yeah and yeah that's cool. yeah no it, it's it's weird because as a as for me, you just kind of live in your own little private universe, and I'm a fairly private person, and and don't don't think, try not to think much of those things. Yes. But the day that I actually had to do it, and you know, it was actually quite emotional. Even though you think about things over time, you talk to your friends and family, and and think things through, and go, okay, I think this is really time to do this. It's time to move on, and, yeah. and you come, to, you know, to a, you know, you have to kind of have a, a rational thinking through of things but then when you actually do it even if you don't want to be at least for me it was wow this is a heavy experience and you you know the way things are all mediated through social media now and so you're like okay here's my little <laughs> you know yeah. my little speech and i think with like management stuff i think we had kind of you know with the band and management we'd all kind of shared our like this is what we're going to do you know we had a plan it wasn't just haphazard you know we you yeah. know had a plan and everything and but then when i actually hit send and you're just kind of sitting there and you know kind of goes out into the world like well that's final know, <laughs> yeah yeah no but it, it, it's emotional and, and i was in my mind i'm like well no one's gonna care who cares i mean there's so many more important things in the world and and but i was shocked at at the um just the positive response from fans, you know, I, that just were like, "Hey, thank you so much. Really appreciated you." And you know, it was it felt it felt good. It felt good in that way. And, yeah. and like I said, it felt emotional because, you know, I, I I have that whatever it is. My parents put those good values in me to where if that was my job, I put everything I had into doing a good job, uh -huh. and so it meant something to me. 
that's good. I, yeah. I mean, if you do a hundred percent, that's all you can, you know, ask, ask of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I'm glad that everything was, really uh, you know, positive. you really think about it, man. Like, do I really want to give away that getting my laundry done for free? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, I, you know, one of the things that uh, has fascinated me when we've talked up until this point is that you, you have, um, I think you have a broader spectrum of things that not only interest you, but that you pursue uh, in lieu of that interest than a lot of other people who are just like, this is the thing I do. I play this kind of music. I am only playing this kind of music, and that's all I'm about. Uh, you know, rarely did were you ever talking about something that wasn't, you pushing your boundaries or exploring new areas of uh, interests or and even challenges. Um, you know, when you were talking about learning jazz guitar, which is like, you know, if you yeah, got still, still spaghetti trying. fingers, then that's great, you know, which we know you do already. So still trying, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry, I, I thought I, I, I thought well, I, that was a rhetorical no, question. No, no, I was just saying, <laughs> just, I'm still trying to play it, still to play over those two five probably, ones. Probably a lot more further along than any of us. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I mean, it, it, it's hard for one thing that you do to encompass all your interests. Uh -huh. um, and you know, it, it, it has been, I think, more challenging to me as a person to, to, fi to find a vehicle to explore everything that I'm into. And I think that part of what led to my decision is – you know, you only have a finite amount of time on the planet and you start going, okay, I'm, you know, reach my, you know, 50 years here. If I'm not, if I, there's other things that I want to do, I have to make time to do those. And you know, as great as being in a band like this, you know, it, it was to be in the Smashing Pumpkins, I really valued everything about it and the amount of, just the, op, the, the experiences, the 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 chance to play with such great musicians like you know Billy and Jimmy and James and then Jack and you know and uh, and various other people that were in the band at the time um, was amazing and working in great studios and being able to make records and you know make album at Rick Rubin's place life, with Rick man. yeah wow. I mean like wow how cool is all that Tour stuff the world the, yeah yeah play many all times those, over. Many times and play the biggest shows, the biggest venues. Um, yeah, it, it was. It, it, I mean, it was awesome. But at but at this at the same time, it wasn't my band. Yeah, you know, I was kind of along for the ride, and it was a good ride. You know, but at some point, if there's things that you want to do, you just have to make a decision. Okay, I, I have to make time to do those things. And it's you know, some days I'm sitting here going, "Wow, this is." I'm giving up. <laughs> you know, I could, pretty, you know, in a couple of weeks, I could have been playing, you know, stadiums with the band and you know Green Day, and the, doing that. But I don't regret it at all because I needed to move on and 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 just just rediscover my own path again. Uh -huh. Because you know, I like I said, I gave 17 years of my life to it, and. Um, like and I all said, I got was this lousy T-shirt. <laughs> yeah, and I just, all I got is this, this guitar knob satin jacket. <laughs> um, well, by the yeah. way, you mentioned your 50 years on the planet. Happy belated birthday back yeah. in February. We missed it. Todd. If you guys lived in L.A., <laughs> I, I would have invited you. I had actually a really um, nice birthday party at right. the Rainbow Bar and Grill in Hollywood. Oh, wow. Uh, nice. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's awesome. It, it was fun. <laughs> That's super cool. <laughs> it was fun. Well, uh, you have, uh, in your in your time, in your contemplation, you somehow managed to, uh, aside from tight, probably tidying up your home, and probably for laundry. the first time in 17 <laughs> years, and doing your own laundry, uh, you've put out an album already. Nice. Well, it's coming out. It's, it's coming, coming out. out. It, it's <laughs> not. It's not out yet. So I have a. But maybe by the time people hear this, it actually will be available for. 
for pre-sale um, or maybe even available for sale actually because the the long wait for vinyl is not what it used to be. Right. So I, I, I'm actually a little behind on my schedule now because I thought, okay, I turned in all the artwork and the masters. It's going to be six months at the earliest. And um, the guy, my friend Chris, who's putting out the record on his label, Claire Story, he said he sent me the test pressings and I listened to him. I'm like, oh, yeah, sound great. Everything's good. Give, you know, give him the thumbs up. And then he's like, okay, they're going to be here in six weeks. I'm like, what? what? (laughs) I'm like, what? I'm not ready. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so I have – it's a – just so to explain – so I have – I'm putting – it's a double vinyl – ambient record so it's it's just it's uh it's not a rock and roll record it's a, it's an ambient instrumental guitar record it's just solo guitar just all looping and um called metanoia which is a greek word for a kind of transformation i guess is one way to to translate it and um i thought it was appropriate for the time period and it's actually I didn't record it. It actually was recorded in 2021 in live in Toronto. I wow. performed. Um, I was asked by an artist to perform at a big outdoor art installation, and so I did actually seven 45 minute performances and one 10 minute performance for the mayor. Wow. <laughs> they had like the opening night. They're like, "Okay, we're going to do a really short performance." Yeah, all the city people are going to be here. And then once they leave, then we'll wait and then we'll do like the full Malone. Um, yeah. So it was like a, a, a huge, um, I think about a hundred yard video screen. Nice. Whoa. It was really, it's, 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 it's a huge, yeah, it was this huge outdoor field. And so I played in front of it and, um, yeah, it was cool. What? And did you so run, up, did, run back and forth uh, the hundred yards back? And no, forth they only gave me a that? small, a very small <laughs> stage. I don't, maybe it was not a hundred yard, but maybe like 50. I don't know. It was big. It was really big. It was, wow. it was really big. And does the mayor of Toronto have a, uh, short attention span? <laughs> well, you know, they got places to, you know, <laughs> places to go, places to be. You know I mean? and, uh, time is money. Time is money. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm sorry. I have to they're like, sorry. they're like, we paid, we paid for this, you know, for you. You know, and, um, <laughs> I could just hear in the middle of your, like, you know, your. man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but, so I did this thing. And so I asked the sound front of house to um record everything on pro tools so i we recorded all the performances and so somewhere i was actually talking to uh, matt ferguson from line six and he used some similar types of things that i did for um the launch of the pacifica Mm -hmm. he's like hey we have this video that we're doing and i actually want to use some stuff that you recorded from some other video we did as kind of background music. Do you mind? Yeah. And I said, of course, you know, go ahead use it. And, and, um, and he said, you know, you should think about, you know, putting out a record like this or something like that. And I said, well, you know what, I should actually go. And I knew I had all these files from that, from this art installation. So I went back and listened to it and it was actually, you know, it was a lot to listen to. Oh, <laughs> so, wow, wow. Um, yeah. But anyway, after going through and, and listening to it, I actually decided to use two full performances from Sunday morning and Sunday afternoon. Mm. Um, so that's the record. So record one is the morning performance and record two is the afternoon performance. And so then I took it over to my good friend, Josiah Mazashi, um, who has Cave Studio, and we did had to do some digital editing be, um, to the files, just a lot of, there's like a lot of, um, cause I, it was, it was all looping. And so there was a, a lot of layers by the end. And so it was kind of some spiky things yeah. to take place. And so we had to use some, uh, dynamic compression and stuff. And he did such a great job of, of making it sound good. And it's crazy cause on record two, you know, they're full performances, but on record two, there was one. I hit one bad note, like out of key. <laughs> and I was like, oh, man. You're allowed like, that. What, what a bummer. You know what I mean? And uh, 
But because of the nature of it, because it's all it, you can't make edits because it's obvious if you right. cut out a section. But we actually, you know, we use Melodyne because it's you can do which is like an auto tuning kind of pitch correction software, uh-huh. and it's uh, uh, polyphonic now. So we actually could we just put that section in and found the one bad note with the, within this kind of a huge landscape of sound and we were able to fix it. So <laughs> there's only one little bit of digital trickery. Other than that, it's, it's, it's all, all, all me just playing, but it's just one guitar just layered and looped the whole time. Amazing. What guitar did yeah. you use on that? Strange. I used the James Tyler line six very Oh yeah. Wow. The, 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 which was the last incarnation of it which were quite better than the original very axes yeah. um uh but this actually is more of like a a real guitar you it actually even as a as just if you don't use the very axe funk's actually a decent sounding guitar mm. and really high quality um plays really well but i actually used it with the cat five cable into helix Got and it. then you're able to because with it, the, and it actually because i'd never tried the very axe like that i'd always when i tried the very axe i just plugged it into a regular amp with a quarter inch cable Mm -hmm. and i'm like i don't think this really sounds that great doesn't really work Mm -hmm. you know it doesn't work so well but with the cat 5 cable into helix and when you're all in on that all kind of modeling digital world actually works quite well sounds way better well there's yeah i mean it's just all one contiguous union yeah, yeah, yeah. And for the stuff I was doing, I wasn't going for a, a Les Paul into a Marshall, natural, Guns N' Roses, ACDC kind of sound. You know, yeah. it was going to be very um, de- disfigured type of guitar sound. It's the exact polar I'm running the opposite direction <laughs> of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was cool because I could use, I, I, I basically went between the Strat, uh, Rickenbacker 12 string, and I think actually uh, the Les Paul for some humbucking type of stuff. And yeah, so it's that and just um, one Helix preset. Hmm. What? Wait, one Helix preset? How many things were on that preset? Well, a bunch of things. You know, <laughs> I, had, I, had a, I had a huge, you know, a huge <laughs> signal chain, but, it's, but I didn't switch between presets or anything. It's just the yeah, one preset. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. You uh-huh. broke my brain there for a second. I'm like, <laughs> I just heard that. And it went, wait, what? what? <laughs> yeah. And then just straight into the PA. Wow. Now, yeah. I, I can't remember in, in all your other visits if we ever talked about um, Sustainiacs. Have you ever used those, for, especially for like the ambient stuff? Uh, well, on this, I used the Ebo. Okay. I didn't use, because I was using the Very oh, cool. I wanted to use that guitar, so I actually did use the Ebo. But I have um, a Pacifica, a custom, my custom made Pacifica that one of them that they made me and I do have a Sustainiac in one of them. And in, in my band night dreamer, I used it all the time. I just kind of, anytime I played a solo, I pretty much had it on (laughs) because I, even if I didn't need it for sustain, um, but I did because in that band, it was electronic and I was all in the box too. I just, I didn't have like an amp on stage. Everything was so I couldn't get any natural feedback. So it was, it was it was cool to have, but what I really like about it is it just if you have the right amount of distortion and delays and you know, a certain type of signal flow and you have that on, just random things happen, which I like. Mm-hmm. I like when like oh that's a cool thing, and, you know I can just react to that. Um, so I love I do love the Sustainiac. It's a it's a fun it's a fun tool. I, that has come up quite a bit in our last conversations, mm-hmm. and I think maybe maybe my phone and stuff is listening because I get served up content about the <laughs> Sustainiac. <laughs> Your phone and, is like, listening to uh, you. Yeah, and you know <laughs> we were talking about the f- uh, Fender uh, uh, Fernandez's uh, version of that. Oh yeah. Well, the, f- so the Fernandez was the sustainer, right? Yes. And then the Sustainiac. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I'm in a pickup making group, and the uh, I believe the maker of that pickups in our group and and uh yeah it's it's a really really cool pickup really really cool and it uh, is yeah it seems like it's it's it was kind of ahead of its time and kind of died out and now it seems to be kind of coming back i see more and more people using it 
Yeah. 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 I mean, it was, I, in fact, with last show that we talked about, because I was up at Reverend, uh, yeah. the Reeves Gabrell's uh, signature model has has a Sustaniac in the. In the yeah, that was actually the first one I got. I, I bought a Reeves Gabrell's. Mm. And then I lo- and I was using it, and then Yamaha got pissed. Like, why are you playing that guitar? I'm like, because it has. This, I need to. I want the sustain. So they built me one. We with could the do sustain- that. <laughs> so they quickly built me one with the sustain. Yeah. 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 Uh. But the re the yeah is is cool. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. They and it was funny because um, so his you know Reeves has it, the Satriani has it, right mm-hmm. um. I think the Pia, the Vi Pia, are one. Mo- I don't know if the Pia doesn't come with it, but Vi always uses it. He has a bunch of them. Um, Ed O'Brien from Radiohead has the. I think he has a sustainer, right? The Fernandez on his. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So there's quite a few, and I think that I feel like Schecter even recently made like a fairly inexpensive model, you know, yeah. like under a thousand dollars that had the Sustainiac on it. So it, it's something that you can kind of get into now without having to break the bank. Yeah. It's, a, it's, it's a cool tool. Nice. Seems like they would have put that on like the Sinister Gates model or something like that. If they're still making that. I don't, I'm not <laughs> sure, but, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, so this has been a, th- th- this was like a, a departure, uh, at least from my ears, what I'm used to hearing you play. But I think one of the things that you know we've talked about on the show, I um, mean, to- you know, we we talk amongst ourselves, Tony and I, and Jared and everybody, and and you know w- what you what you brought to the Pumpkins, um, and just hearing you play on your own, it's like, wow, this is like you're obviously so much more um, than you know, quote unquote, rock, and this <laughs> isn't that, you know, and yeah, and, yeah. And, uh, I'm just curious, like what what was the genesis to go down this path? Um, well, gosh, it's it, it's hard to even to place myself in in a in a narrative about it. I I I guess the f- what it was first would have been through Brian Eno. Uh, you know, like discrete music is, yeah. is basically a very similar type of, you know, so I feel like in this, in Metanoia, I'm, I, I feel like it's just, it's almost like a tribute album <laughs> in a certain way to where I'm just yeah. doing something like that, you know, you know, me and, and, and then of course, someone who I, I really love and admire Robert Fripp and his <laughs> Frippertronics. Yep. So I really love, and it's, so if you followed even like my line six blogs that I wrote, I did actually one whole entry one time on on Frippertronics, how to do that with with the Helix, and um, and and so that has been a, a kind of uh, area of guitar that has been totally fascinating to me, and and I and I think another thing after I did this these performances. Uh, in Toronto, and I actually did another one with the same artist at LACMA, the LA County Museum of Art here in mm-hmm. LA. I, I really liked the intersections of music and like the art world. And oh, who's the and artist again? Krista Kim. Krista Kim. Okay. Yeah, Two K's. yeah. Uh, Krista Kim. Krista, yeah, and then K I M. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Cool. And um. So I, I really liked that intersection. And so that's something I think in the future I would like to do more of and could see myself getting more involved in doing in things like that and playing more solo guitar. Like actually I, I would like to play some shows um, like this just by myself. Wow. Doing this kind of doing this That's kind of cool. stuff, but you have to find the right venues of like showing up to a rock club on a Wednesday night and like with a bunch of rock and be like, hey, I'm gonna come up and do this looping. Is like not <laughs> right. a good not a good idea. So you have to you have to kind of it's got to be set up properly. Yeah, yeah, you need at least like uh, chicken wire mesh, you know, to stop the bottles from coming. <laughs> exactly. No, it's very interesting because you know Robert Fripp after kind of King Crimson and stuff, he 
you know, he started doing this for Protronics thing, and he had to do it with two Revox tape recorders. Oh. If, I don't know if you've ever seen. Have you ever seen photos of it or anything? Yeah, I have. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, and um, but he, I can't. He he has all this terminology for it, but he basically wanted something that didn't have um, all the difficulty of of traveling of like with the whole rock rock band where so he could play different types of venues doing the Frippertronics thing. Mm -hmm. And so on the kind of some of those early tours, he was playing everything from record stores to small clubs to, you know, other types of kind of alternative type of venues. Mm -hmm. And, um, cause it was all about finding the right space to do it. Um, but so I think, like I said, that's something that I've, I've, I, I think I drew a lot of inspiration from. And now, sadly, yeah. for, you can get all of the uh, the effectiveness of a Frippertronics in about a three hundred dollar pedal. <laughs> yeah, which is crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. You don't. Thank goodness you don't need the two. You don't need the two. Um, yeah, the, the two re Revoxes. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. I was looking, I got, I, I don't know. Oh, it's, it's over there across where I can't cause I'm, I'm tethered to my headphones, but, um, you know, but those Revox tape re machines had such a sound though. That's mm -hmm. so it's really, even though you can do the effectively what they did with the, with the delay, it, it's hard to get the sound. And, but there's a company that makes that Revox preamp in a pedal. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So I so I had to get that, and so I'm, that that's kind of that's that's kind of fun. It's a it's a good kind of DI thing, just going straight into the computer with that, I can get some really cool sounds that way too. Nice, yeah. Uh, I know that you've also been very involved in uh, assisting some other. I guess I don't for that sitting in with uh, some other uh, artists uh, that are not actually um, artists but musical artists. Yeah, I've been actually doing a lot of producing out here in LA. And so I've been working I uh, not and and some remote things. I actually just finished uh, a track today with this artist called um Carell. She's more of a dark wave synth kind of music. Hmm. And she's from Madison, Wisconsin. How do you spell and, that? Uh, K A R R E L L E E. Ooh. All right. Yeah. Lots of double letters. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. I know. Everybody has to, you know, her, her name is Sarah, but that's her band. I don't know. Project name. Yes. I don't know. Sarah Smith, AKA Sarah spelled S S A A. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, um, I'm actually working tomorrow with another, um, this artist, uh, Lauren Lackis and she's, both in LA and Austin. She lives in both cities and yeah. I guess she lives in Austin, but she comes to LA to work all the time. And, um, her music is cool. She plays, I think a lot of, she plays a baritone guitar. So it's yeah. B, B to B and, and, and kind of heavy shoegaze. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. And, um, electric baritone or acoustic baritone? Electric, oh. electric. Cool. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. It's a cool sound. And so we started, um, we're starting to work on some new songs for her. And um, I just did a single for another artist out here in LA. Her name is Izzy Outer Space. Uh, so I've been doing a lot of, yeah, you know, it's, it's people, they just hit me up, you know, I guess, yeah. <laughs> I guess. And um, I, I tend to only take, I don't do like if the music resonates with me, then I'll do it. Yeah. Nice. Uh, I have two quick questions for you, and then we'll probably start to rounding third here. Um, you, you, you mentioned some dark wave synths and, and stuff. One of the bands that I've talked uh, recently about, um, and I'm just curious to know if you're hip to them or not, um, but uh, actors? Oh, um, I know that, yes. I, I mean, I'm familiar with them, and I feel like I think – my buddy Josiah maybe mixed their last uh, album. Okay. Yeah. 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 It seems they, like it would be in your purview. Where are they? Are they from Oregon maybe, or oh. are they from Portland? Yeah. Let's say yes. I don't know, but <laughs> yeah, I know, but I, I'm pretty sure Josiah mixed their last record. Yeah. I, yeah. 
love that stuff. Yeah. Um, so it's the, a, I know it's addictive. It, it's yeah. I mean, <laughs> we were on our way to see the gods <laughs> play here. And I said, you know, Hey, you know what we need to see before a bunch of like, you know, old fellers play some, some uh, old style rock and roll, like heavy Which stuff. It's good. It's good. Yeah. Um, we should listen to some, some, some dark wave on the way, <laughs> you know, and I popped it in and I mean, I don't think we said anything the entire way up there. Thankfully. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is yeah. good stuff. I have one final question. Okay. Uh, now that Beyonce has paved the way for country music, when <laughs> will there be a Jeff Schroeder country album? I know it. Well, as soon as Jared invites me to Nashville. Come on you know. down. <laughs> oh, it is, it is funny because I feel like it's, I mean, it, it's, it's funny because I, it may you know, happen. Rock, rock, <laughs> rock has rock. You know, people have been talking, you know, rock, we, is it kind of had like a bit of a hit, you know I mean? It's not yeah. in the mainstream. And so it hasn't had quite the comeback that, that, you know, some people have predicted. And so now you're seeing, um, you know, pop artists like Beyonce, Hey, I'm going to do a, a country album. So I think, you know, Hey, you know, it's not my thing, but it, what I find to be interesting, um, is this, is that I feel like I've had many friends from LA that were even a little bit older than me that, you know, grew up in doing the hard rock hair metal scene in LA. And as they've gotten older, I think it's very easy to transition into doing outlaw kind of country. Oh yeah. You know, because, sure. because I, I, I think it, it, it's, it's, it's like, cause you kind of feel silly maybe playing if you're not really dedicated hard rocker anymore. And you're like, I got I want to do stuff, but what do I do? I feel like it's, it's a way you can kind of slot into that. It's just a different vocal delivery. It's almost yeah. the exact same stuff behind it though. Right, and you get to wear outfits and stuff too. If you're into like dressing up, oh like, yeah, the, the nudie suits, yeah. <laughs> yeah, those are hot right now. Holy mackerel! No, I, I mean, but I get it. I mean, this is just you know, and, and I'm not talking smack on anybody. I think that as you get older, you're like, okay, like what you know, what can I do? You know, I, yeah. I mean, the, the leather pants. Yeah, you know, I don't know how much longer <laughs> I can wear them. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. No, so you can go. You know, there's a few places you can go, right? You can go country, which people go. You can go jazz, like Alex Skolnick kind of has gone. You know, I actually went and saw Alex recently and 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 hung out with him a bit. He played at the Baked Potato in in L.A. and you know, it was he it was so cool. You know, and he does that jazz jazz fusion thing. Yeah. And or you know, like I think like for me, it's like kind of more like okay, I can do like I really like this kind of Eno Fripp kind of experimental music type of thing yeah. a lot too. So I think that's um, where I see myself kind of spending, you know, trying to cultivate some time. And Plus and, you get to wear you know, capes and things. Yeah, You can do whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you know what I mean? You can be, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So along with your recent announcement, this is the last question, everybody. Uh, along with your recent announcement that you were leaving, there was – also a recent announcement th that they were looking. Um, I won't go any further than that, other than to say you are... Did all three of you guys put in audition tapes? <laughs> no. <laughs> I no did. way. I did. <laughs> no. But it was yeah. me with a sledgehammer smashing pumpkins. <laughs> yes. Billy doesn't want anybody taller than him on the stage. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the question is, you instantly became a very valuable unicorn out there. Hmm. And I'm curious if, if someone was saying we've been looking for a very rare unicorn, what would be that band that you would basically drop everything and, and get on the bus with? Wow. Um, <clears throat> that's a tough question. You know, I don't, I haven't, I have not even thought of it. It's really hard for me to answer because um, I don't, it's not something that's in the forefront of my mind. Squirrel nut uh, zippers. 
<laughs> Let's say Steve Vai has to drop out of the '80s King Crimson uh, tour. If, if I, I, I was, you know, you read my mind. So I was going to say, like, if 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 I had the skill level, that's actually what I'd want to what I'd want to do. Um, but that 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 gig is way way above my my skill set. Mm. But if 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 we're you know, living in the world of fantasy, yes, I would love – that would be like a dream to do. It's actually – what was interesting is uh, recently I went – Robert Fripp just did a talk um, at a venue, at a place here in L.A. Uh-huh. And I went with my friend uh, William, and William is the bass player of um, this band, uh, Future Islands. I don't know if you're familiar oh, yeah. with yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so we're just – we love all this stuff. So we're like, oh, let's go. We got to go see Robert Fripp talk. And I'm not saying I don't get recognized too often, you know, in LA is like, you know what I mean? It's, it's not that, but I was shockingly at the Robert Fripp talk. I, you know, so many people came up to me and were like, Oh my God, I saw you guys wait. So I, I think it just means that King Crimson fans, there's a, a sex, a segment of King Crimson fans, like, bands like the smashing pumpkins so i don't yeah. think it's too some in so you know i'm not saying it's a huge intersection of fans but i feel like there are there is crossover because i think that it's i realize there at that at the robert fripp thing there's king crimson and then of course it, it makes sense that you know danny carey is playing in beat because i think a lot of king crimson fans like tool especially if they're younger yeah. king crimson fans and so and then tool fans like the smashing pumpkins you know because mm-hmm. it's kind of that era of alternative harder alternative music so it kind of makes sense but yeah. yeah i'm super jacked for the beat tour yeah you know and yeah, i got tickets for both shows oh cool yeah yeah in la because they have one at the beginning and one at the end uh, at the tour so i'm i'm going yeah i'm super excited now it, when you're shopping uh, like i don't know like gelson's or something um, <laughs> you know do you have you ever turned down the aisle to like get some you know uh some kind of salad dressing and you you and dj kiyoki both reached for the same <laughs> Right. Does that ever happen? Uh, no, I mean, I mean that's really specific. I know, but you know, wow, no, no. none more specific. <laughs> that might be the most specific question anybody's ever asked you. I don't know. It's crazy. I, I you know, recently I was at my, you know, I, I was at my supermarket, my local supermarket shopping, and I saw someone that I know, and. I was like, uh, like, you know, <laughs> oh, someone nice. I actually don't, but you know, but it wasn't like, I don't even like, it's not that I don't like the person, you know, yeah. but you know, sometimes you're just like, ah, you have a lot to unpack if they, I'm, it, I'm not, yeah, I'm not feeling particularly, I just wanted to come in and out. So I, yeah. I did like definitely like a, a loop around a different aisle and then <laughs> to the self, to the self checkout real yeah. quick. Yeah. I've done that before. <laughs> yeah. So, right? so just oh, yeah. out, of, out of curiosity, what is your favorite salad dressing? Green goddess. Ooh, there it is. Ooh, that's <laughs> a good choice. Yeah. But, but, well, well, you know what? That's like, that is true. But I would say if I'm really being honest, I'm not going to lie. I like ranch. <laughs> mm. I like I like a, I like just an iceberg lettuce salad from Denny's with <laughs> with ranch and croutons. Yeah. Hey, there he is. All right, <laughs> hey, heavy I'm on there. heavy on the ranch, heavy on the croutons. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I love the ginger that you get at the Japanese steakhouse. That ginger salad. Oh yeah, That's yeah, sure, favorite. sure. I've bought in pints of that and taken it home. It's yeah. so good. Oh, well, it's not, it's not better than ranch. <laughs> it isn't. Um, I, I was just reminded of something as this is the very, this is the last thing we actually are. But um, I uh, wrote down a note when we were talking about the fuzz face stuff. And um, Jeff, I'm going to uh, send you something because uh, Hello Sailor, our, our good friend Joe Halliday, he sent me um, his version of a fuzz face. Uh, in in the the you know the, the big mic stand housing, and I haven't heard anything like that one. So yeah. I'm going to send that to you, yeah. and I and I and I would love to hear what you think about it. 
Okay. Awesome. Yeah. 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 Wonderful. No, it's, it's a thing. You know what I mean? It's, and it's, it takes, you kind of got to figure out how to make it work. Like the amp and everything. It's, 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 it's got to be set the right way. Yeah. Dig it. Yeah. It's like a Ferrari. Set, it kind is. of. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and a trash truck. Yeah. If, we want, you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, some sort of hybrid of that. V12 trash yes. truck. <laughs> uh, all right, Tanya, get us out of here. We got some stuff to do. But first, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> how about you guys pack up the El Camino, come on down to Nashville so we can play a little game of Would You Rather? <laughs> Very nice, Jared. Very mm. nice. So, you're walking down the street and you realize, hey, I've got some good news. Uh, you're recording your new ambient electric, electronic, experimental progressive rock album. <laughs> this is so good. And, <laughs> and the great Brian Eno had agreed to produce it. Ah, the bad news is Brian Eno also committed to a tour with a 70s UK cover band called the Roxy Crimson. Crimson. <laughs> but hey, no worries. Brian Eno is buddies with two other Bryans that are available to produce your album. The one and only Brian Wilson or Brian Seltzer. Which <laughs> Brian? Or Seltzer. Or Seltzer. <laughs> Seltzer oh my his, gosh. His cousin. That was my eyes. Be the, the three stooges. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta keep this on here. It's it's yeah. my eyes. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> Which Brian would you rather produce? Would you rather produce your album? Which which are you going, the Seltzer or Wilson? Seltzer. I know, I know, I know. Yeah. Yes. So I'm an Jeff, idiot. What are you gonna do? Honestly, I kid you not. That we wrote that before we started talking with you. Amazing. So, Amazing. <laughs> uh, the, it, it, Tony it all and I, comes it, full circle. We, we heard yeah. the dings when you hit all the things. We're like, hey, we got a good one. <laughs> We're okay. in alignment. We're in alignment. Yes. Tonight. Yeah. All right. Let's hear from Tanya Bolonsky first, and then we'll uh, head around to Jared and then Jeff. Well, I, I'm going to assume that Brian Wilson is uh, in a yes. better state. Capacitive state. Yes. Uh, but that being said, <laughs> I think it would be hilarious to have Brian Setzer have a go at <laughs> ambient music. <laughs> Although, I mean, he's done the orchestration. That's true. I mean, he yeah. might be good. Yeah. But I mean, just for shits and giggles, that's what I'm going to do. I'm, yeah. I'm going Brian Setzer and his brother, Brian Seltzer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's a little bit more emo. Yeah. <laughs> he's, uh, he's very fuzzy. Yes. Uh, so, Jared, how about yourself? I want the... Testing the walls, feeling the vibration in the walls, Brian Wilson. I want that Brian Wilson to produce my album. All right. That, that's what I want. That, and that, that era and that mindset. Yeah. Okay. Jeff? Yeah, definitely. I, I'm going to take the risk and, and go Brian Wilson all the way, too. Yeah. Uh, I am as well because I think – with all of the things that he, you know, he was making up and just creating new ways of doing all kinds of things, uh, being experimental without being unapproachable, I would love to see what he would do in, in, like with stuff now. Hmm. Yes. So once again, Tony Island. Yes. Tony yeah. Island. Yep. Um, anyhow, so that was a, a, a very appropriate yeah, would you rather. Fun. Uh, and we need to thank. I, want, I, I really want Mike Love, though. <laughs> don't, no, don't get me started, Jeff. Don't yeah. get me started. Wait till you hear my cover of Kokomo. Oh, <laughs> yes. oh Bermuda my, and Bahama. My yeah. deconstructed version. Yeah. I'm going to have to do that now. I'm, I'm seriously, maybe, man. I'm, I'm seriously thinking about maybe I do this cover of Kokomo. I like it. Oh. Well, oh I won't speak to you. There won't no. be an eighth time. I will. On the show. I'll buy it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, Tony. Yes, Todd. At this point of the show, there's a special group of people we love to thank. These are our executive producers. Yes. Now, an executive producer makes this show possible. How do you become one? Head over to patreon.com forward slash the guitar knobs. Check out a couple of different levels in which you can participate, become a friend, a sponsor, a hero of the podcast. 
Uh, each level comes with some very nice thank you gifts and opportunities to win great giveaways. Oh, yes, we've got more coming, folks. But in addition to all that great stuff, there's one thing more. What would that be? You get to have your name read on the thing, buddy. Your name read on the thing, and that's what I'm going to do right now. So special thanks to these executive producers, John Sebastian, Trevor Ellenberg, Cameron Pampas, James Bell, Michael Furman, Eric Hemmer, Brett Hogarth, Gregory Randall, Don Kloss, Ralph Gottschalk from Wonderful Audio Technology. What? Rusty Sneeden, Vader and Pedals, John Halverson, Rick Calhoun, Trevor Gunberg, Elad Mizrahi, Mike, or Richard Kendall, not Mike Kendall, James Pennington, James White, Justin Jones, John Esterly from Rare Buzz Effects, Anthony Lathrop, Stefan Lamb, Michael Senchuk, Ken Sayers, Darren Gregory, Tom Barazin, and Sean S. 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 <laughs> oh, but wait, but wait, there's more because in, we have a special level of executive producers. We call them our grand poobas. These fine folks are the top of the heap, the A number ones, the creme de la creme. So special, special, special thanks to these grand poobas. Adam Johnson, Anthony Gemalero, Billy Spitfire Unlimited, Bob Crouch, Brian Robison, jo uh, Cody Foster, David Kaminga, David Tyndall, Enrico Fernando, Fox Hill Studio, Hex Matos, Jack Cadian, James Pennington, John Williams, LSJ Music Company, Matt Hart, Michael Van Zant, Michio Murakishi, Moon Guitars, Paul Von Eppinger, Sam Jett, Science of Sound, Steve Keys, <laughs> Tyler Rines, Zach Oswald from Brandon Wound Pickups, <laughs> yep. and Jimmy Newton. Thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Indeed, indeed. We are grateful to you all. Um, and I think you might be uh, grateful for joining if you're going to be a new member new of member. our new supporter. Yes. Because we got some great stuff that we're going to be handing out. It's, it's not like, I don't, giveaway is, is kind of like gifting. 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 Let's go with gifting. Okay. Uh, so very excited about things to come, and we truly appreciate it because it does keep the wheels moving. Without your support, this just simply wouldn't be possible. Now, if it's gifting, does it have to be gift-wrapped? No, but I might do that just for one or something. Okay. Now that you mentioned it. Oh, man. Yeah, that'd be yeah. nice. Yeah. I could get some, like, on, on a sticker mule or something. Like, no, um, like uh, one of those other things. Uh, the print. Amazon. And whatever. <laughs> and get, uh, no, you could probably get, like, custom wrapping paper with mm. our logo on it. You probably could do that. Ooh. Yeah. Mm. That's what I need to spend money on. <laughs> well, why don't you just. I just said, oh, we need your help to keep this going. I'm like, well, how about our own wrapping paper? Well, and I, you can buy yourself a screen or silk screen press and oh, make yes. your own. Oh, that, that's, yep. that screen print, lovely. all that stuff. I'll do that. Um, all right. We need to say a colossal thank you to our good friend Jeff Schroeder for hanging out with us. It's been Absolutely. a minute, and we have thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, it was fun. Because it always goes by so quickly, I can't believe it. Yes, not everybody says that, but <laughs> we didn't get, I mean, there was. I mean, to be honest, I had this list of things that we didn't even get to here. Oh, hey, well, that save it for <laughs> number, round, eight. number eight. Number eight. <laughs> yep. Because uh, I, mean, I really thought you know there was these this whole line of pedals and stuff around the Beach Boys, right? This doc is it because this you know, document? I just saw didn't, that. Yes, we didn't get into that, but we, 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 let's not. We can't. We can't yep. open that. Can uh, right that now. We'll save that after you. We'll After do a, put out the next little album. teaser. Yes, with Kokomo. Yes. And we can do a special <laughs> we'll mic. on the Kokomo single release. Okay, okay. We'll, we'll do the yeah. Mike Love pedal. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> One big knob. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. You're really laying it on thick, Tony. Uh, now, Jeff, where can people go? I mean, you've got a million things going on. So just point them a few directions you'd like to yeah, have them go. Yeah, so... Um, I will have the album when it's really, you will be able to get it. If you follow me on Instagram, which is easy, um, you know, it, there'll be information there. There'll be links, um, on my band camp. There will be, we'll be selling the record. Also, if you go to my website, Jeff Kim Schroeder.com, it's in the process of being updated. We'll have all of that information when it, when it's ready. 
Excellent. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. Tony, head over to pickguardian.com. Check out some of the wares I have available for purchase. But I do custom work, so shoot me a line on email. <clears throat> Let me know what you need, what you're trying to do. And I'll take very good care of you. Make your guitar even more your own. Even That's more right. yours. Even more yours. Gosh, God. Right. You know... I drop these nuggets and you mess nuggets. them up. Nuggets. I just smash them yes. to All right. smithereens. Jared, how about yourself? Jared.allen.brandon. Instagram. Drop me a line if you uh, wish to do so. We'll talk about gear, whatever. Okay. There it is. Thanks, yep. Jared. Uh, you can shoot me a DM Ooh. on Instagram at Guitar Knobs. We would love to hear from you. Just tell us what, you, what you're up to, who you are. How about a Would You Rather or two? We'd love some new Would You Rathers. Uh, yep. And uh, also, give a listen to the Valentinos while you're driving around uh, yeah. to uh, grip the wheel a little bit tighter. That's right, especially when the theremin kicks in. Oh, my God. <laughs> my favorite part. Yeah. Uh, and... Uh, other than that, everybody, have a fantastic guitar week and subscribe! Oh, yeah! yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ready as ever, man. Uh, do you want me to think of a would you rather? Uh, We've got it covered. We got it covered. It's going to be amazing. Yes. Are you going to let me read it? No. Yeah, so anyways, so much to talk about. This is going to be fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh boy! <laughs> I have uh, Lacroix. I was counting on you saying a chilled Chablis. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> I wish. I had a cask yeah. of Amontillado. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Chateau Neuf de Pap. All right, Jeff. We are clear. We're done with okay. you. <laughs> um. And away we go. Well, that's it for these knobs please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash the guitar knobs. Visit our website at theguitarknobs.com for all of our past episodes, four on the floor blog, and other good stuff. You can connect with us on social too at our Facebook page and share your gear and stories on our Facebook group. Also be sure to check out our Instagram at guitar knobs. Catch you next time.